What is happening, webheads? Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. I'm your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you the latest Final Order cutoff video. This list is powered by my own comic shop, Comic Central, who sends this newsletter to me each week, and I share with you the latest, the greatest, the newest, the hottest comic books. Getting ready to hit store shelves soon probably within a month, okay? So if there's anything on this list, guys, that you like, don't hesitate. Let your shop know today. You want this comic book. I want it in my pull box when it comes out. So you don't have to worry about rushing to the store, missing out, or whatever the case may be. So if you love this kind of stuff, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started with this week's FOC. Okay, guys, so here we go. We're kicking it off with Marvel, and the first thing we have is Amazing Spider-Man. This is issue 48. Peter Parker versus Ben Riley once again as he finally gets his rematch. Mima, we, excuse me. Meanwhile, what's going on with Norman Osborn? Only two issues left until The Amazing Spider-Man issue 50. Guys, we're getting the Green Goblin back once again. It's right around the corner. We definitely have our variant covers here when it comes to Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, hopefully, the story is good and better than what we have been getting. I'm not going to hold my breath, though. All right, next we have Avengers. This is issue 13. There is plenty of variants for this one. Uh, just because it has the Avengers here um, going against Orcus. So it looks like we're going to have Avengers. We're going to have um, X-Men here. And they're going to be battling the Sentinels. So this could be a fun issue. Maybe better than what we have been getting with the Avengers. I think the run on Avengers has not been very good in my opinion. Uh, it leaves me a little bit hesitant about what Jed McKay is going to do with his X-Men book because I feel like he doesn't write team books all that well. So again, we'll see what this issue has to offer. All right, next we move on to Daredevil. Uh, here we're on issue number eight. This is an oversized issue marking 60 years of Daredevil. So if you guys are in the Daredevil right now, let me know in the comments below. I actually dropped this uh, run. It's not nearly as good as uh, uh, Chiquetto's artwork and um, uh, Chip Zdarsky's running here. So I'll pass on this one. All right, then next we have the continuation of Gods. This is Gods issue seven. Uh, I'm not even sure how many issues this goes on for, but uh, I know a couple of you guys out there do like Gods. You've mentioned it to me that it's, you find it enjoyable. And if you still find it enjoyable, I want to know in those comments below as always. All right, and then we have a book that I still don't know if I'm going to get yet because issue one hasn't come out yet. We got Jackpot Black Cat issue two. It says, much of New York City is out to kill Mary Jane Watson, including Black Cat. There's something sinister going on, and it's tied to classic Marvel villain with ties to our co-stars. So you got your main cover there with some weird facial expression with freaking Mary Jane on there. But I do like the Peach Momoko variant. That one is pretty nice. All right, then we move on, and we have the Rise of Powers of X, or Rise of Powers of Ten, whatever you want to call it. This is issue four. I've said this before, at this point, I'm so lost with X-Men, I don't even know where we're at uh, with everything here, how it all connects, and I'm just waiting for the total fall of X to happen, and then we're going to start fresh, but there are some gorgeous covers in this one, looks like we got a connecting cover there on the left, nice uh, Dazzler, I think it's a David Nakayama, and then you got uh, Jubilee on the right. I still have to watch X-Men 97, the first two episodes. What did you guys think of it in the comments below? All right, now we have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. This is issue three. So I, I think this one is getting ready to end very shortly. And then we're going to get the return of Scarlet Witch again. So that's kind of odd. I don't know why they just don't continue it from that original issue one, volume one, just with Quicksilver in this book. And then it continues from there. I guess you want to try to get new readers on there. So there's your variant covers. I do like the one with... Um, uh, Wanda sitting there reading some Thor comics and some other comics on her bed. I think that's different. All right, so let's go forward now. We have uh, Spider-Punk issue three. This is the whole, what, arms race type of story that's going on. Um, 
the first issue was okay. The second issue is getting ready to come out very shortly. Uh, I'm going to see how that second issue is. I liked the first issue. I thought it was okay. I don't think it was like a spectacular book, but it was kind of cool. Uh, the, the awesome thing, though, about Spider-Punk is these cool little variant covers. You know, you pick and choose, obviously, which one is like more punk rock for you, right? So, yeah, I like that. All right, now we move on for the Star Wars fans. Star Wars, we have Star Wars, Darth Maul, black, white, and red. This is issue one. So we're continuing on with the black, uh, black, white, and red stuff. Very fitting for Darth Maul as that's like his main colors, right? So obviously this is going to be an anthology book. Um, you know, if you like these types of books, go ahead, check them out. All right, then we have the continuation of Star Wars Jango Fett. This is issue two. Um, we'll be passing up on this one as well. I'm not really into the Star Wars comics right now. So there's that. <laughs> All right. And then next we have from the Ultimate Universe, we have Ultimate Spider-Man issue four. And uh, I think this one we have actually a guest artist on here. And we have, which looks like Gwen Stacy in that middle cover bottom row. So she's making her appearance in this book now. That's kind of cool. This book has been nothing but awesome, guys. I am so looking forward to it. Yeah, it's just so much better than the main Amazing Spider-Man title. All right. And then we got a couple of ultimate reprints here. So it looks like we have Ultimate, Ultimate Universe, and then we have Ultimate X-Men. So we have those ones there. Then we have Wolverine Madripoor Knights. This is issue three. First issue was really good. I think the second issue is coming out next as you just got Captain America, Wolverine, Black Widow, and they're like going after like alien tech. It's cool, man. It just goes back to the early days of uh, X-Men. You got Chris Claremont who's writing this book. It's got cool artwork. Again, reminds you of a simpler day. Uh, it just, Wolverine is written the way I used to read him when I was a kid. Okay, next we have X-Men Forever. This is issue two. Again, you guys know my thoughts on X-Men here, but if you're collecting all the X-Men stuff, all the Fall of X stuff, you're going to want to continue this. I like the bottom right cover there of Exodus uh, when it comes to variants here. All right, then we move on to our indie gems, guys. So the first thing we have is from Boom Studios. This is titled Blow Away. Excuse me, I almost said Blown Away. Blow Away, this is issue one. Unyielding wildlife photographer Bryn, uh, whatever your name is, isolated in the remote cold of Baffling Island, sees something she can't unsee, okay? So maybe it's a murder, maybe it's a little bit of a horror book, maybe it's a little bit of everything. So if you love what Boom is putting out, go ahead and check it out. All right, but here we get the return, guys, of Something is Killing the Children, issue 36. I know a lot of people jumped off of this book. You know, a lot of people were specking on it. Also, the movie, I'm still loving it as much as I did when the first issue came out. We're getting a new story arc. Something is Killing the Children returns to reveal more of Erica Slaughter's formative, formative past set before the Archer's Peak saga. A perfect starting point for new readers. So take that in mind, guys. And diehard Slaughterverse fans alike. Each standalone issue of this arc highlights Erica's appearance in five different American towns, chronicling her journey that forged her into the unparalleled monster hunter she is today. So we're we're really diving deeper into the character, and I definitely can't appreciate that because the more you know about her, you know the more you feel attached to her when she goes on her future endeavors, right? So really cool variant covers as well. All right, and then we go on to Gargoyle's Quest. This is issue one, so we're getting another Gargoyle's Tale. Um, this one is done by Greg Wiseman. Uh, I'm not a huge Gargoyles guy, but I know there are people out there that really enjoy uh, the IP. So if you're interested, go ahead, check it out. Then we have this 7174 AD issue one. First time in news print from the favored brain and drawing desk of T.P. Luis and Ashley Wood comes an all new ongoing series collecting bits and Bob's from Ash's storied career. 
up first, two full length tails, duo star, duo star racers and miss and misses featuring 48 newsprint pages of madness and mayhem. Wow, that's interesting. I don't even know what this is. I'll buy it. <laughs> All right, let's move on here. We got Dark Stalkers Jada one shot. So if you guys like, you know, fighting books and and like anime inspired type of books, I guess this is for you. Uh, not for me. Don't read those. All right. And then we have Cobra Commander issue four. The Energon universe is in danger, guys. Co Cobra Commander has found a new ally willing or not that may just make him unstoppable. Unless, of course, someone is one step ahead of him. Dude, let me tell you, bro. Holy cow, the last issue of Cobra Commander was so freaking good. As you get to see the character behind Cobra Commander in that variant cover, Nemesis Enforcer was revealed on Cobra Commander's bodyguard. So freaking good, dude. And the battle against the Dreadnoughts was great. And uh, based off of what's going on in the Energon universe, Energon is just the main resource here, guys. I mean, I feel things are just getting started. I cannot wait here. All right. Then we have from Vault, which is Slash Presents Death Stalker. This is issue one. This is a cult classic warrior hero, Deathstalker, burst into the comic scene with all-star lineup creators, including Slash, Guns N' Roses, and writer-director, uh, Creature FX wizard, Steven Katonsky. That's cool, man. If Slash is making a comic book, I gotta check that out. That's awesome. I think people might excite, be excited for this next one. This is Dick Tracy. This is issue one. Dick Tracy returns in an... an a new ongoing series, guys. This is from Mad Cave. And this just looks like a little bit more updated, uh, more hardcore, violent Dick Tracy than we know from the old days. So I'm definitely going to check this one out for sure. And then from Dark Horse, we have Lester of Lesser Gods. This is issue one. Okay. Like, we got this dude driving a scooter. He's fighting demons. He's overweight. It's in a Speedo. It's getting more and more uh, weird as I talk about it. Let's move on. <laughs> Rick and Morty presents Final Week Brawler, issue one. I'm not a Rick and Morty guy. Never read a single comic book. Watched a few of the cartoons, but I'll pass on this one. And then we have Sam and Twitch Case Files. This is issue two. I think the first issue comes out this week. Uh, here's a little description that I have for it. The hunt for a murder brings to light an old case our two distinguished detectives thought long closed. Could there be a missing connection? That's all it gives. So it's very, very, uh, you know, it doesn't give you very much detail here. But these guys are in the Spawn universe. They're connected to Spawn. So I'm going to pick it up. Most likely, this is a $2.99 comic book. All right, and then we move on to DC Comics, guys. Batman Superman's World's Finest, issue 26. So, beware of the power of the doom might. Following the imp-shattering events of the Batman Superman World's Finest annual and 2025, issue 25, it's up to Mr. Mitzelplick and Batmite to convince Batman and Superman that they're for real this time in this dynamic duo of odd couples can't work together it's just a good series overall um the annual was kind of cool as it had to deal with you know the joker and lex luther meeting up with each other and now you got just batmite and mitzel blake in there that's gonna be fun man cool variant covers as well all right guys catwoman issue 64 is next how many of you guys are reading catwoman how many of you guys are just collecting Catwoman for the variant covers? Let me know in the comments below because there's some nice ones as always here. I like that one all the way on the right hand side. The middle one from David Nakayama is nice, the bottom middle. So yes, we have that one. Sorry, I was a little late on bringing those covers to you. But yes, we do have those covers. So let me know in the comments below. All right, next we have a classic facsimile. We have the... 
Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. This is issue one of 12. So obviously they're gonna do exactly like what Secret Wars, you know, is released in Marvel. So if you wanna read the um, Crisis on Infinite Earths for the first time, go ahead and read it here. You can collect it in floppies each month. You can get the original version or you can get the foil. Uh, I actually never, <laughs> you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. I never read this story in a whole. So I might read this as it comes out each month and I might just, uh, you know, review it when I talk about it on my worthy ones and after the poll. So let me know if you guys ever read this. All right. And then we have the continuation of Nightwing issue 113. We're getting ready to wrap this up. This is the landmark 300th issue, guys. And the last couple issues of Nightwing have been really, really good as Nightwing has been kind of protecting this little kid that was, you know, kidnapped from his uncle and all he wanted was money. He was posing as a heartless copycat. So some good stuff there. Good variant covers as always. So solid series. Never really goes anywhere. It's just enter entertaining to read. All right. So here we go. We have uh, Superman issue 13. Bottom right is a foil with no trade dress. So that's how it is there. Superman lifting the Daily Planet globe. Uh, that's pretty awesome here. Uh, this is the House of Brainiac part two. So the Brainiac storyline is getting ready to kick off here very shortly. Looking forward to it. Superman has been much improved uh, in this past year or so. Okay, next we move on to Titans. So here we have Titans. This is issue 10. Uh, the Titans are committed to helping humanity, whether humanity believes in them or not. The team is fighting on several fronts, but they refuse to back down. They refuse to buckle under overwhelming pressure. But are the Titans being manipulated? Are they on the wrong side of conflict that could consume the world? So this book has been good since Beast World. The longer it's out, I wonder if it starts to fall off for people a little bit here. But uh, we'll see where it goes going forward. This one's also written by Tom Taylor. All right, and then we have Wonder Woman. This is issue eight. Upon this recording, I still have like 12 books to read by, by tomorrow to do my next video of After the Poll, and Wonder Woman is one of them. I am curious to see how this most recent issue turns out. Wonder Woman's been hot and cold for me. Tom King's writing when it comes to this book is like a little long-winded and I get bored, but I think this story is interesting overall. So there you guys have it. Are there any comics in this list that tickles your fancy? Do you need to let your comic book shop know? Well, if you do, you better do it right now. Call them up on the phone, send them an email, send them a text so you don't miss out. It doesn't matter when they come out you'll be guaranteed your copy this way. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you love the content. I'm gonna leave you more content right here. In fact, this is Marvel's June solicitations. You guys that watched it already seem to like it and you wanna see DC and you wanna see others, you know, keep letting me know in the comments below. When I have time, I'll try to do them. So as always, guys, support the local comic shops, keep buying, keep collecting, and always remember, read your comic books. Guys, I'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.